Okay. Bite is right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how are you doing, Ayan? Yes, I'm fine. I, okay. Now I have winter break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, good for uh, podcasts like these. Yeah, so, uh, so since Marion, I know that uh, you are a you are an artist. You, frankly speaking, uh, I got to meet you at uh, Willemshaven, and we didn't get much time to talk or know each other more. So uh, this is going to be an opportunity for me as well as people uh, who will be you know watching this uh, podcast to know more about your uh, work, your process, what you do. Since I know you are an artist and uh, I've seen you do uh, street art, 3D street art and uh, murals in general. So please tell us about yourself. Uh, what kind of art do you do? Do you do only uh, the street art or uh, do you have a art practice uh, that's studio based or you paint on canvases as well yes of course i started to paint on canvas but i have no art uh, education i learned all by myself mm -hmm. and uh, my i have no real studio my apartment is rather rather small so i'm happy that i can paint on the street <laughs> there's space enough and i started with no, uh, normal 2d classical street painting because we have a festival in Germany, in Geldern, where it all started. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it developed and suddenly 3D was modern and now everybody wants to see th 3D. So that is what I do most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when did you, you know, start uh painting uh, on the street or when did you like start painting did you start as a child or uh, it, it was something that you discovered later on and then obviously you went on uh, from canvases to street painting so when did it start and how long have you been uh, you know doing street art of course i started to paint as a child uh, i have example was my father who was a constructor and he was uh, painting everything. Today they do it with computer. Mm -hmm. uh, in former times he was painting so and he liked to paint caric caricature so I learned a lot of him and I had a good art teacher at school. Uh, so I started as a child and um, I painted always but I studied different jobs and then I moved to a little city at the Niederrhein in Germany and there they had the street uh, art festival in Geldern and first I took part for fun and uh, suddenly I got so much good feed feedback so I was very astonished and I learned and learned more and improved uh, yeah so that that is how it developed hmm. when did you, you know start uh, did you when did you do your first uh, street painting was it at a festival or uh, it was just something random you tried uh, uh, on your own? No, it was at the festival. Hmm. Um, but first we, we painted the dogs or something. Just colors on the floor, just for fun. And then I learned more and more. But uh, we, we can go basking in Cologne. Cathedral is a very good place to go basking and practice that is a, such a big su big chance it's uh, not always it's sometimes very good to earn money sometimes not so good but you can try what you want in cologne yeah and there i practiced more and of course uh, edgar muller was our uh, teacher for everybody of of the german street artists he was our ideal and we all tried to 
to learn from him and to be like him. So uh, I practice like this. Hmm. Right. So, so since you mentioned that uh, you've started, uh, you you do a lot of you you've started with the uh, festivals, street art festivals, and that's where uh, you started your street art journey. So. Uh, uh, is it something that do you like just do a street art uh, in the festivals or uh, is it something that you make living of or uh, is it something just uh, I want what I want to ask is it something as a side hustle that you do or is it a full time uh, thing that you do? No, it's a full time thing now. We were so lucky that this uh, 3D um, occurred. So we could all make our living out of the street painting. Before it was very hard, for example, in Cologne, only with basking, it's, very, it's a very hard business. So I learned from really low. But sometimes we did not get money in Cologne, but uh, we were always happy because we did what we wanted. It was our, always our passion. And even if you don't earn money, you learn something. So, uh, it, but it was really a hard time and uh, suddenly the 3D occurred and we could really earn a lot of money. That was a big surprise. Yeah, one time in my life I was at the right time at the right point, I can say. <laughs> hmm. Right. So, so since uh, you said that you did not have uh, any art education from an art institute, you learned uh, everything on your own that you do. So how difficult was it uh, for you to you know, acquire uh, skill as an artist? Uh, because uh, in art schools uh, or art universities, a student get a lot of uh, different, uh, students are exposed to different uh, you know, mediums, different materials, they get models as well to paint from and uh, they they're you know they get a lot of support from the institution so how difficult was it for you as an artist uh, uh, to learn uh, this craft of painting yeah it was quite difficult but and I, uh, when i'm old i want to go to art school and learn more <laughs> <laughs> but um, on the other side, I think if you study art, you don't learn uh, realistic painting or fi figurative painting. You learn installation, you learn many stuff, but not what I want to learn mm. uh, how, how to paint. So it's also very good that you learn it by myself, uh, yourself. I had uh, for I had at Camilla as a help. I worked a lot of with Gregor Wusik. I learned a lot of them just by looking and mm. watching you learn you can learn by yourself very much and uh, like i heard it with anat it was also always under pressure so you have to learn um but uh, i don't know if you see at uh, last three months i did electricity box box is very small <laughs> did you see and uh, the clients they give me my freedom i can do what i want in the city so, and in, in the time I want, that is very nice. So I can, could really learn a lot more that I can do it in my rhythm and very slow. And if it's wrong, I start again, no problem. There I could learn also very, very much. So it's good under pressure, but also if you have time. Right. But the learning never stops. <laughs> Yeah, true, very true. Uh, so since uh, I, I know that um, I think probably uh, Germany is a country where uh, a lot of uh, art festivals happen and probably the most street art festivals happen, uh, especially the ones that uh, allow chalk drawing or 3D art. Yeah. So obviously you go to uh, a lot of festivals, but how is the work, how, how are the work opportunities as an artist in Germany, like since you do street art, so, or you do 3D art, so how are the work opportunities, are there, uh, are there enough opportunities for all the artists, because I know uh, you are from Germany, Frida uh, is from Germany, and you guys, uh, uh, poster of uh, images, but is the work uh, easy to come by or is it a difficult thing? Uh, until now we had enough work and we are not so many, we are only 
about five, mm. not more. And it's, uh, for example, for oil painters, there are hundreds or mm. thousands, but we are only five. So there is enough work. And it's also, it's not easy. Now, many young people, they know Photoshop and how to distort the taught the things but it's not easy you have to be strong you have to speak english you have to make your taxes yourself it, it is not just a pain and you don't have to know how to paint it's not so easy so so we are not many and and we have enough chances to paint right uh, since you mentioned about uh, the new guys uh, coming in they know a lot of uh, technology like photoshop and other softwares they draw a lot on uh, tablets and know the distortion how the distortion works so how uh, what is your design process like how do you uh, you know uh, draw your compositions do they start from uh, uh, sketch and then how do you do your distortion is it uh, like this, you do it with just strings or uh, you also use some sort of technology and uh, where do you like uh, get your inspiration or ideas from as uh, i have seen you paint a lot of uh, animals in your uh, work like you paint a lot of horses you painted reindeers and uh, different animals like so uh, where do you get your uh, inspiration from for art and uh, how what's your process please Please explain it in a little detail if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, my inspiration, I, I, I like to pay, paint horses since I'm a child. I always I like animals and uh, now sometimes I have message that you don't eat the animals, that you treat them well, but uh, I like to paint animals and faces also. So, um, but you wanted to know how I do my distortion, as I learned with a lot of from Gregor Bozik, and uh, I think he is born with a 3D brain. So he just makes everything by looking. I learned with him, so I had to do like him. And uh, we always, we go to the point, look, and then paint. So I, and I always wanted to do it with Photoshop and use the technology, but still, I'm, not really able. I'm not good with Photoshop. What helps me a lot is a tablet. I have since one year I have a tablet. This is a new universe. It saves a lot of running. Um, yeah. But uh, at the end, I am perfect prepared with a uh, distortion or anything. And in the end, I do it like always <laughs> go to the point and run. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I admire the people who have a sketch and just paint the whole day, I'm not able to do it. But also if you have a perfect sketch, it's not always uh, proper because when you're at the location, everything is different. The floor is, uh, has a curve or anything and then the sketch is not right anymore. So you have to do always to go to the point and correct your thing. So I'm developing, I'm still running and use the modern technology. Right. right. I remember in the beginning when I started learning uh, 3D art and I didn't know about uh, the t distortion techniques on Photoshop, I had a very similar process. I had to, you know, draw one line and then go back to the um, my viewpoint and then see if I have done that trial line correct or if I've applied a paint, is it correct? And then most of the time in the beginning, it used to be uh, wrong. So it was a lot of running here and there. And you know so i also learned uh, like that but since i you know got to know about uh, photoshop and technology and other techniques so obviously it saves a lot of uh, time and uh, and you know a lot of effort as well so it's interesting that there's still people that you know who are uh, applying those old techniques with the uh, strings and you know just by looking at the drawing so it's very interesting for me uh, so this brings me to another question that uh, since uh, you've been painting for a while now and uh, you've seen uh, and you've obviously like you said you've been where you've worked with gregor and uh, edgar muller so 
uh, since Edgar Muller, I have uh, seen his a lot, his a lot of works, and I really enjoy them. So, did you like spend uh, a lot of time uh, learning from him? Like, did you assist him on his projects? Uh, so, how did your uh, you know how did you meet Edgar in the first place, and uh, how did you you know learn from him? Like working with him on projects and similarly uh, with Gregor. So how did you, you know, started working with him and learning from him? Yeah, I learned by watching Edgar and he made also workshops in Geldern in former times with 2D paintings. And, and my first 3D in Berlin, I made with Edgar and Manfred Stader and Gregor. Uh, yeah, that was very good. So I learned from him a lot. Yeah, and, and then, but then we did not work together so much. No, but I, le I learned by looking and uh, he showed me a lot. He was very free with information and he had a uh, paper where it's written, described how this distortion worked. He's, he was very free with information. Yeah, so I learned in, in many ways from him. Now I don't see him so often. Okay. So uh, since you were you, uh, since we talked about the art festivals in Germany and uh, around Europe, and uh, you've been to uh, almost I think every art festival around the world, if I am uh, not wrong. Uh, so where did you you know enjoy uh, the most? Uh, painting the most like. I've been to Willemshaven and then I have uh, been to Dubai Canvas. So both are very uh, different uh, events with when uh, Germany, it's more of, uh, you know, people giving respect to art and, uh, you know, see the processes and everything and uh, people come and interact and see the art coming. And obviously in Germany with Willemshaven, uh, we had a very strict timeline and uh, because it's just a two day event. So the work is we have to work very fast. It's different and audiences are different. So how has your uh, experience of uh, different festivals have been? And where did you enjoy the most uh, working? My favorite festival is in Denmark, uh, in Brande, but because the people are very friendly and the area is very beautiful. But every festival has a different character. For example, Geldern is still uh, that they, they you have to win there. And that is what we don't like anymore uh, because everybody gives his best, even if he's not good, if he's only starting, everybody gives his best. And then he gets not, he wins nothing. Uh, and he also pays a lot. He has to pay to go there and to live there and his paint. And so he loses when he's going there. And that is not nice. No, now the all the other festivals, we always uh, made the pressure to the organizers that they pay everybody that they invite a special amount of people and they pay them um, only. But OK, the spectators like competition. So the first one gets uh, some flowers or something, only symbolic present. But the, it's better if everybody is paid and his expenses. Uh, so that is a different and difference. Now, Wilhelmshaven, you are right, is I'm very happy that we always painted the whole Val Valois place there, big space with where there's enough space. But the, where you painted, it's very small and so many people that is a little bit stressing, I think. <laughs> so um, Sarasota, you have more space. It developed also. We moved to Venice, so we have a lot of space. And the spectators are everywhere good but they have different character according to the culture. For example, in, in USA, they take photo of you, everybody. And at once in Facebook, although the people are over 70 years old, in, my father would not know how to use Facebook, <laughs> but in USA, they, everybody takes photo and photo, uh, Facebook, social media, they are very fast with this. And yeah. 
the questions are everywhere are the same, so you don't need to know the language. So how long does it stay? Is it permanent? What do you do if it rains? <laughs> so you can answer, it's always the same question. <laughs> Where do you come from? From Heidelberg. Yes, I have relatives in Heidelberg. <laughs> it's always the same. <laughs> um, so yes, Italy is also, Everybody wants to go to Grazia because it's um, there it all started. It's the most famous festival, but it's the most un uncomfortable festival, I have to say. For me, it's too hot and uh, they don't do much for the artists. Mm. It's not very comfortable. So, but every festival, big or small, has his own character and I like all of them. Mm -hmm. I want to have a festival in Australia. I've never been in Australia. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, so, okay, uh, since you mentioned that uh, people have uh, similar questions, uh, like how long it takes and what if it rains. So did you also encounter this question that uh, why can't we uh, see that 3D without uh, a camera or a lens? Because uh, a lot of artists uh, encounter this, uh, this question as well, that uh, why can't we see this uh, without, uh, you know, a camera? Is the technique not correct? Because I had to face uh, this question uh, when I started painting in public in Pakistan. And uh, people used to come and they thought that uh, the 3D uh, painting that we do on the floor, it would appear 3D without uh, the lens or uh, the camera and uh, they were, they thought that something is wrong with the technique that i'm doing something wrong and uh, so they thought that it's wrong but did you also encounter a question like this yes it is a question you can say that have, they have to close one eye and concentrate the people are not concentrated because there is too much to see if they concentrate they can't see it with closing one eye. And this is because we uh, measure our picture from one point and the camera has also only one eye. We have two eyes, they make two uh, pictures they, and then they go together in the brain. And this is why it's not uh, perfect if you uh, look at, at first and don't concentrate. That you have to tell the people and mo uh, many uh, say, oh, now, ah, now I see. Some people not, because uh, also people have different eyesight and different brains, but a lot of people see it then. Uh, but of course, I always put the lens because I don't want to answer always the same questions. <laughs> and, and I remember when we started, it was very difficult. We started also in Cologne and Gregor wanted to start with 3D. He made a 3D picture, I made 2D. And people were standing on his picture and talking to me. Oh, you must, you must, uh, this is very nice, but you must do 3D. This is very good. <laughs> <laughs> and they were standing on his picture. And, and then he came and said, please go to this point and look. And, and he is not good in German. So they think, oh, he wants to sell me something he don't want. <laughs> so it was very difficult at the beginning. Uh, uh, only people in Cologne are many tourists also from Asia and Edgar Müller and Manfred Stater, uh, Stader, they started in Japan. So the Asian people, they came, go to the point, put the woman in the picture, photo, go away. And they were already teached. <laughs> you really could see the difference. But it is not easy, like you said. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. But I, on the other hand, uh, people still don't know they are which are older than 40 or 50 because they don't used to look in internet now the young people they know at once but the older not but on the other hand they are our clients they are still the people who are very astonished to see this in reality so you have to be patient with these people <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so I, since last year, or I think not two years now, since 2020 and 2021 is coming to an end, uh, the world has encountered uh, coronavirus or COVID. So, 
how has it uh, you know affected your uh, art practice since uh, on i think for uh, last uh, in 2020 there wasn't any festival that happened and i think in 2021 some festivals happened so how did it you know affect your uh, art practice in general that uh, did you lose a lot of work opportunity or uh, did you you know spend that time creating different kind of art or you had something planned that you wanted to do and you got time to do it so how did it affect you did it affect you financially as well by losing the work or how did it affect you or it didn't affect you at all actually i don't dare to say it loud sometimes, I had more work than ever last year. <laughs> oh, right. Because the, the event people, they had the money, but they could not make events. Mm. And if I come, the people, the spectators don't come altogether. They, you can organize them to come slowly with mask. So they have money and they want to spend it. And I was there. So, so I get a lot of work more than I want. I could manage <laughs> and um, yeah even one shopping center she, they said oh we have, we have so much money please do what you want I was busy the whole winter usually I never paint in the winter time in Germany so I had enough work and uh, plus the, there were no not so much spectators than usually mm -hmm. so I could really concentrate I need not did not need to answer so many questions so i it was really a flow i could learn more and concentrate so for me it it was a good time <laughs> i must admit it cannot go forever because uh, there must be people at the events but from i was very lucky last year mm -hmm. <laughs> so i learned a lot and i got no financial problems well, now I have financial problems because I have to pay so many tax and <laughs> this year I have not so many jobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so uh, since you since you've told that you've been painting for a while uh, for a while now and you work with different artists, so what's your uh, favorite uh, memory as um, you know working on street um, like? some event that you cannot forget or some person you met that uh, you know you cannot uh, you remember uh, you know till date so share your uh, favorite memory from you know traveling around the world from different festivals i think there are so many uh, good good situations like i cannot mention one now one time we found Julian Bieber painting uh, 40 minutes, minute, uh, meters far away. That was <laughs> interesting. No, everything was good. No, we, uh, uh, the, the, other, the other artists, of course, now I miss the other artists and the street art family. And so there are so many good situations. I don't know, <laughs> special now. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, since uh, since you like spent a lot of time uh, with three D art and uh, you, uh, you you worked manually and then you've started you've seen also grow it grow with uh, you know technology coming in and uh, you know uh, new people coming in a lot of young people with different ideas. So where do you see uh, you know street art going in the future? Uh, especially with uh, you know all this technology that um, that has come in and now uh, you know advertising companies and uh, they're looking for new and new things to you know go with their product or to promote their product. So where do you see the street art going in the future? I don't know. Uh, when I started many years ago, I always I uh, I earned money first year and I always thought oh I hope I can live next year also with street art and but surprise next year also and next year also I thought it must uh, finish sometimes everybody has seen 3D everybody knows but now it is growing it is growing uh, uh, street art is modern now so it is always growing and I'm I don't know where <laughs> What will be in future? I hope it will be as long as I have to work. And 
um, okay, like the other artists also said, this uh, social media also gave a big push. Uh, so you, you can divide your art and you can see what the other artists are doing. So uh, you want to, to do better than them. And so the development, the development is very fast. So I don't know where it's going. I see in my city in Germany, many little village, all they want mural artists now. <laughs> so I see we have enough to do, I think in future. I hope it will stay like this. Right. Uh, so what's, what's the uh, best part about, uh, you know, street art events? Because uh, especially talking about the festivals, uh, since when, uh, obviously, when I work alone, you, you get to make, uh, you get commercial projects and everything, you get to make a lot of money and everything. But what's the best part uh, when uh, you go to street art uh, festivals? Uh, like for me, it was uh, when I uh, came to Germany for my first festival and then in Dubai so it was to you know meet uh, different artists like uh, I got to meet you and then uh, Ruben Poncia I uh, used to follow his work and I got to meet him and then you know uh, Bazu and uh, other guys I got to meet them so that was for me you know uh, the best part of uh, going to the art event or the festival and making you know friends with them so what's the best part uh, for an art event for you yeah, of course, that is a sense of the street art festivals that you can meet your uh, colleagues and meet many people. But uh, since I saw your blog, it was very interesting because I never knew so much about the other people. I lived uh, one week together with Jenny, but you got more information <laughs> from Jenny <laughs> than me. Uh, Karen always work, works next to me. I did not know so much all that Limnesh and Jinsi meet through the street art. So uh, I, I think at the street art festival is not enough time to speak. The, the work is hard, the painting is hard and in the evening everybody is together and is eating and you have no time to speak really uh, close to the others. Um, so and now I like your blogs also. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, the reason that I started is uh, the very same, you know. Especially in my in my country, in Pakistan, uh, there are not many people who do street art or uh, you know murals or three D art. They even the art students they do canvas paintings and uh, they do not try an experiment uh, with art. So something I did and you know I got started getting work and everything. So now this uh, blog or this podcast that I started, the main reason was it uh, is to, you know, uh, make it uh, an educational resource as well for people to see and uh, see that how different artists work and uh, what their process is like and how did they start. Like, obviously, everyone starts, everyone has very humble beginnings everyone learns and they grow so this is the main idea and obviously since you said that uh, you didn't know much about jenny or kareem or uh, elimination jency and you work with them so it's uh, that's the main reason why i started uh, this podcast you know inviting my friends to talk about their lives their journeys and um, uh, now I have, you know, a lot more respect for uh, those uh, artists that I got to know more that how they, you know, started and what their process is like. So this was the main reason. And, uh, you know, talking to you and uh, knowing how you started this, uh, your journey has been and how you learned and everything. So it's very inspirational and, uh, you know, very enjoyable for me uh, to listen to you. So I think we are, uh, you know, coming towards the end of our uh, session. So I have this one more question for you. Um, since you 
you have had a lot of experience now as an artist and uh, you've seen uh, you've traveled the world as well so what one or two advices you would give to uh, you know young people coming in like young artists who want to try art or street art or any form of art so what would be your one one or two advices that they should you know try and do this and they would enjoy the art and uh, they would be good as well yeah, so my advice is not only because uh, about art. Uh, you choose something you really like, and then you stay to it. Uh, if, you, if it's your passion, you do it, and you have a long breath, even if you don't earn money at the moment or not. You, uh, you do it with your whole heart, then it's okay. Then we, you can you will be successful sometimes. And even if you're not successful, you are happy with the thing you do. So you have to really uh, choose the work uh, you love, the, the thing you like most. That is my advice, <laughs> if it's possible. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting advice. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, since uh, I have, you know, asked you all the questions that I have, I had. So, if I, if you wanted to say anything that I didn't ask, you can uh, say it uh, now. <laughs> I hope we have uh, street painting festivals again mm -hmm. soon. So it's uh, because the festivals are also good good not only to meet the many people or they because they come from different cultures and you see they are all in peace not the one from ukraine is not the enemy with a from russia mm. or yeah, pakistan with india or, or they they say in germany all the romanian people they treat the animals so bad i never met any artist who is treats animals bad so uh, it is very interesting to meet all the different cultures and to see people are people that have this again. Right. Now so, you're frozen. <laughs> uh, is it uh, working now? Yeah, now yeah. it's working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so thank you very much, uh, Marion, for taking out time, uh, you know, and joining me on this podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This is the end. <laughs> bye bye.